The best definition for channeling, somebody might say, oh, isn't that when you talk to dead people? No. The, the best definition for channeling is basically you're, you're, you're a bridge between two things. A bridge between two dimensions, two worlds, two levels of consciousness, whatever it is. But you're, you're a bridge. Which means we're all channels. What are you channeling? You can be a, a, you can be a mechanic and believe it or not, that because that's your world, that's your focus, there's times when you're struggling and you're trying to figure out a problem with an engine, let's say. And I know nothing about engine, you know, so don't get the impression that, that oh, he, I didn't know he know. I don't know. So, but if you're doing something like that and you suddenly have an insight, an answer comes to you as to what the problem is, you may not realize it, realize it but sometimes you're channeling the universal mechanic. I know it sounds a little odd, but it's a consciousness. Whether you're a carpenter or a mechanic or whatever it happens to be, you can channel. You can be a mom and not know what to do in a particular situation. And there's that moment where something comes to you. You're channeling from the, you know, a global version of the mother. Let's call it that. So we're accessing, you could even say sometimes just a higher self, right? Things like it. We think, oh, angels told me that it could be angels. We can channel all kinds of things, but people don't realize we're always channeling. But what are you channeling? What level of consciousness? If all you think about is something like uh, being a mechanic, then that's about as high up as your channeling will go. Insights around repairing cars. But we're a bridge. And if we start to open ourselves up and think about deeper things, what you're going to start doing is channeling something deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'm going to explain some details about this. But we're all in a state of becoming better. and um, It's our destiny to, to be, become greater and greater channels. Ultimately of what? Preferably God in this world. Those are two different things, right? Spirit in the highest sense to this world. So whether you're a mechanic or you're a, a, a mom, mommy or whatever, you still can go beyond just channeling information of that level to the bigger picture. How can I be a channel of God? The best way to initiate that is to start every day with that attitude. Here I am. What would you have me do? Spirit then will step in. But how much space did you give God today? You know, how much room did you give God? You can hold out a thimble, little tiny cup, and say, God, I'm ready to be a channel of your abundant presence Please fill that little tiny cup. Or you can say, here I am, fill me completely until my cup runneth over, which is really obviously the, the better intention. The roots of channeling, you can say, go back to ancient times when we had oracles. And oracles were often females. And they're sensitives, they were called sensitives. Sixth sights, you know, uh, a sixth sense rather, and second sight. So, you know, they, they were these people that were relatively somehow extra sensitive to hear, to feel, and then they would become guides. You would have kings ruling nations, but they would go to the oracle and ask for advice. Now, what I love about that is the oracle is a symbol of spiritual guidance, right? So when a king would go to an oracle, it's a metaphor of the humility of going to God. In a sense, it's a means of going to God. I have said myself to you folks, Sometimes when you're struggling and a little tight, not sure if your guidance is clear or you're too personally involved, sometimes see a psychic. Get a second opinion. It's an objective second opinion. So I believe it. I think it's fantastic. But the psychic that you see, are they coming from themselves and they, they're really all inspired by themselves? I'm amazing. I'm a third generation psychic, so that makes me better. No, it doesn't. It, for me, it doesn't mean anything. You tell me this and that about you. I don't care. What I want to know is how much you do this. How much do you get out of the way and become a channel of spirit to the best of your ability? That's what you, see, you could say it impresses me. So in ancient times, we had oracles. Even the people of Israel had them, and they were called prophets. Don't think one is better than another, as some people do. Each thinks theirs is the best. My prophet can beat up your prophet, you know. Um, what you want to do is get into the realization, we have always had this. Even before their civilizations that we commonly believe in. In Lemuria, Atlantis, they had oracles of some sort. 
When I came here to Unity of Sedona, I said, we're going to have a chaplain program, but it's not going to be just people kind of doing prayers, you know, and wearing the little scarf, you know, and doing the prayers at the end of services. I said, I want these folks to feel like oracles. I want them to feel that the board can go to them and ask them for extra feedback in case we miss something. You see? That's how much we should believe in this. Presidents should have oracles, spiritual guides. And over time, that drifted. Once upon a time, rulers, leaders had that. And then it just drifted when they realized, well, as soon as they realized I can choose today between coffee and tea, maybe I don't ever need. You know, as soon as they realized they can make any decision, they started making every decision. Then you lose humility, and then you lose connection, then you lose insight, and that's totally a lot of what the Tao is about. The Tao Te Ching, I should say, is about, is saying that you can run a country, a household, and a body by being in the zone with God. That's the way to know you're really come, coming from the highest place. Center, get into God. So get into the way of God. You know, drop in, man, instead of just, I already know. Is that making sense? All right. So not only did we have all this, there's the point where King Solomon, even King Solomon, the greatest, wealthiest ruler of all time, King Solomon, and what he did, he used these oracles. The, the so-called um, magic mirror, that was invented by Solomon. It's not just a fable thing, you know, in a kid Disney cartoon. Mirror, mirror on the wall. He, he had this mirror created where he would do incantations and spirits could appear in the magic mirror for him to talk to. But pretty soon, like other rulers, pretty soon, and humans of every nature, pretty soon Solomon's like, this is great. I wonder, I'm going to just consult them for this and that and the other. Pretty soon, it's your dead aunt and it's your, you know, second cousin on the other side. Pretty soon, he's just talking to anything. And then he lost his mind. <laughs> the, the amazing King Solomon, people were laughing at him. Where they all said, this is the greatest ruler of all time because he, he chose God and he was a, a, a leader of Israel. It was amazing. And now he was walking around the streets babbling, just, you know, like a kundalini casualty. He lost his mind and people are scoffing at him. Why did this happen, O Lord? And God tells Solomon, because you stopped asking me. You started believing in anything and asking just anything, anybody. And it's not, and then the Christians twisted that, the fundamental Christians twisted that to be, you know, the Bible speaks ill of psychics. You're not supposed to consult psychics. That's not what the Bible says. What God tells Solomon is, go to me. Now, you go to me and I'll speak through your psychics. Go to me and I'll speak through the trees. But go to me first. Not because God's competing, but it's a metaphor of why would you settle for any guidance less than the highest in the universe? So it's actually good, you know, practical advice. God doesn't want us to become dependent on these things of the outer world. So if you can just strip away all the misuses and come back to the pure use, it's quite fine to ask for guidance. That's why Jesus himself comes through Helen in inscribing A Course in Miracles. That's why Jesus has come through other people. Technically, you could say that's a form of channeling. If it was evil, why would he do it? It's just that sometimes we, we, got, we lost sight and we you know, steered off, off our center. Now, in more modern times, those psychics started becoming people like Madame Blavatsky in the 1800s. And we started calling oracles, became prophets of Israel. Prophets of Israel became, you know, other names and started kind of breaking into different branches. But one of them became mediumship in the 1800s. So the mediums were mostly talking to, you know, the table, you know, seances. They were mostly talking to deceased ones, which is fine. But really, how deeply spiritual is that? I, I want to talk to m my dead uncle. Why? Edgar Casey sums it up. He says, if they didn't know anything when they were living, they don't know anything when they died. <laughs> you know, like, what, what, what do you think? They've just become illuminated, you know, Casey said? No, they do not. They're still relatively the same. So the seance thing, the one thing Madame Blavatsky offered was she offered talking not just to dead people, but ascended masters. People that have lived, but became, became ascended. So there you took the seance concept, I think, to a, a beautiful new level. And this was all like through the later 1800s. 
That gave way to something else in the early 1900s, Edgar Cayce. Now, Edgar Cayce didn't channel, not, not typically, didn't channel deceased people. He started channeling the collective consciousness known as the Akashic Records, the all memory. So he was able to channel, but he also devoted his, his work to, to God. Instead of self, he shows us the humility of, I don't want to do anything of the ego. He kept worrying about that and saying he really was so humble. That's what gave him his gifts. And I love that. What His humility gave him greatness. Not he aspired for greatness. In his humility, he got the greatest clarity we know in history. So think about that. We should all be so lucky to have that kind of clarity. I'm not talking about him, the human, but the soul in him that said, you know, I want to serve, I want to be helpful, I want to make a difference in the world. But, but now notice, Casey was channeling consciousness, not people, not dead people. Now, there's another shift that starts to happen. A lot of you guys are going to remember, you know, back in, like in the, um, uh, you know, well, after Casey in the early 1900s or 1970s around there, you have Helen Shuckman who received Jesus' voice to channel A Course in Miracles. Now, now um, Helen, what's interesting about this, this segues from channeling mediumship, all these things, Helen wasn't hearing the voice of a dead person talking to her. She heard the voice of Jesus in her mind, which is very important. It sounds kind of relatively the same. They're not. It shifts us from channeling something from outside to learning to channel inside. That's significant if you think about it. And not dead people, but... Casey kind of helped pave the way. We're starting to learn to channel consciousness. Not individuals, but consciousness. And with that came, in our time, starting especially in the 80s, started getting popular, people started channeling consciousness more and more. Pretty soon, they even started channeling uh, other things, you know, uh, Pleiadians, Arcturians, uh, you know, uh, star beings. Sometimes individuals, but ascended masters became popular again. So think about this. There's, if you think about the, the, the um, progression, there's a progression towards something called channeling. And I think it's great. I think it's useful. I think it can wake people up. But you also have to ask yourself, is this a metaphor? What is this about? Are we supposed to all be channels in the professional sense? Well, some of these people in the 80s, 90s, they started doing things in their living room, channeling for their friends, their neighbors, and then it, the buzz got out there. And pretty soon they had to go rent uh, a, a local center of some kind, you know, and the buzz is happening, the buzz is happening, and it grew and it grew and it grew. And then they, they became big authors. But if you're channeling for fame and fortune, you're already setting yourself up for a fall. Because ultimately, that's not what it's about. Can you be paid? Sure. But if that's your reason for doing it, and it's hard not to. It's hard not to have this people, oh my God, you're amazing, you're, you know, and all that. But I've had channels say to me, very popular channels say to me, you know, Michael, because I would have a heart to heart with them about what they're doing. And they would say to me, you know, Michael, you're right. There are times I'm in front of an audience and they were people that actually could channel something, but they would say, I'm in front of an audience and it doesn't happen. What do you do? Psych. Sorry. No refunds. They would tell me I would have to fake it. I would just tell some relatively similar things in that group that I would during real channeling, you see? Now, I'm thinking, well, what else could you do? Because really, uh, faking it's not authentic, and yet, you know, what else can you do? Just say, sorry, folks, go home and no refunds, and then all the publicity, all the money spent, it, it, some people are going to suffer either way. There is a solution, but I'm not telling you what it is yet. But it's challenging to be put in that position. People are all expecting something, and what do you do? If you have a conscience, you're going to want to deliver. I'll tell you this much, though. Bless you. One thing you can do is, is sit down and do your best. You know, sit down. You, you may not be in the perfect zone of channeling, per se, but what you can do is you can sit down, and you can do your best to become what you channel. So I'll elaborate a little bit more on this in just a sec. We all need to ask ourselves, if you're channeling, how do you know that what you're channeling is of the light? 
a lot of people ask these questions. How do you know? Well, first of all, one, one very important distinction. Are you still in control? When something tends to want to take you over and speak through you, I wouldn't do it. Jesus talked to Helen when she described A Course in Miracles. Any time, if the phone ring or the toast popped up or whatever, it stopped. Let her go about her business until she said, okay, I'm ready. And then it would continue right mid-sentence wherever it left off. Comma. You know, and continue. Perfect dictation. And we're talking over uh, years that she would just be able to pick up wherever she left off. That's, if it's a loving spirit, it's going to let you remain in control. Another thing to use to discern whether you're channeling or someone's channeling to you, for you, or in books, the clarity of the information, man, it should be, should be relatively clear. It should always be loving. Now, when I say loving, it doesn't mean that sometimes it's not like kicking butt. But underneath that, there should still be love. Whatever you're channeling or listening to, it should have value. There should be something good about it, something valuable about it. And one way to know the value is what? The outcome. You know, watch for the outcome. There were some really popular channels in the 90s. A lot of celebrities got, got on the bandwagon with some of these channels. These channels eventually started telling the celebrities what to invest in. <laughs> Things like horse racing, which one would win, and it didn't happen. A lot of cele these celebrities that I've known and such, uh, they lost millions of dollars to channels that they trusted to be clear. Got to be clear. But what's the outcome? Right then it tells me it's not of the highest caliber. Edgar Cayce was very conscientious about that. People would say, uh, uh, the stock market, tell me what to do and not do. Even when he did it, he was right, which shows us the accuracy level, which is another point. The accuracy of the channels gives you an idea of something. Casey was accurate, but he wouldn't keep doing it. He would stop after one or two times, and again, his conscience, he'd just say, no, no more. But people made millions of dollars, and some of them, during the Depression, even. You know, his, his work was always that great, that clear. Now, another thing is, it's, it's always wise, and I think relatively easy, to, to look at the material. You know, whatever it is, again, it's, it's books or whatever it happens to be. Think about the material that has proven itself, whether for you, that could be the Bible, it could be A Course in Miracles, what you know to have already proven itself to be accurate, profound, valuable, and so on. Clear, loving. You take that and you can use that as a means of measuring the other material. When I have heard people channel some of the real populars of today, channel, and someone in the audience asks, what do you think of A Course in Miracles? I'm just using that book as an example because it's, it's kind of proven itself. What do you think of A Course in Miracles? And these beings go, oh, it's, it's, it's nice. Brushing it off like, eh, it's okay. But this is, we're the highest. I'm, you're already, I'm already done with you. When you say to me, when they say in the audience, what, what, do, what do you think about, for example, uh, masters like uh, Jesus or whomever? Um, oh, Jesus, yeah, for his time, he was pretty cool. I'm done. But I love hearing ascended masters being channeled from people, even star beings like Ashtar being channeled through people saying, Christ is the master of masters. I love seeing the humility when they can put things in proper perspective. So for me, I'm just saying to you, think about, tune into what you know has been proven and accurate and valid, and you can use that as a means of kind of measuring other things. If they contradict it, think twice. I've had a lot of students come to me, Michael, I'm confused. I, I love this, but then this thing contradicted that thing. Why? Why is it contradicting? Is it just a minor contradiction? No big deal. Let's move on. You maybe misunderstood what they were saying. Or is it something that's actually not as high as it seems to be or pretends to be? So this, you know, and, and all through history, the prophets of Israel, that claim to be at times psychics, oracles, not all of them have been authentic. So please know that there is, you know, there, is, there are charlatans, as it were, in this kind of material. So, you know, just because somebody says, you know, and I, I get this sometimes, you know, Michael, uh, my guides are telling me that you should, whatever, you know, part your hair on the side, thank you, you know, <laughs> tell them to go channel a barber or something, I don't know, you know. Um, I, I hear all kinds of things. And people get actually kind of upset 
If I go, oh, thank you, you know, I appreciate it, I'm good. Well, Michael, are you going to follow it? Because my guides told me. And I'll go, oh, I'm good, you know, thank you. When they get angry for me not taking the advice of the thing they channeled, then I know it was the right decision to not pay any attention to them. Because I'm going, wow, where'd the love go? Michael, out of love, I'm going to share my guides are telling me to tell you something. Oh, great, out of love, okay. Um, no, it doesn't seem right for me, I'm good. And they're, oh, how dare you? Oh, I see. The real you. This is like a bad marriage or something, you know. The, 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 other, the other side of the person comes out. Okay, so get a divorce, you know. Um, tell your guides, um, I want a divorce, you know. So something, something I'm leading to with this. Channeling, try to get this, channeling is something we're all doing. You don't know it, realize it, but we're all channeling. Because our higher is always trying to come through, whether it's as angels, guides, fairies, elementals, star beings. The higher is trying to come through. But it's got to fight with the lower. The ego is trying to channel it through you into the world. Some people would say even like, like demons coming through some people. Well, forget that for just a second. Just call it ego for a second. Everybody, every day is channeling. And if I in, you know, uh, am, am having a conversation with somebody... I'm going to be channeled. I'm never doing anything neutral. I have no neutral thoughts, the Course says. That means I'm always channeling my ego is coming through or I'm allowing spirit to come through. One of them runs on automatic pilot. It is your default program, which is ego. Because that's the one we bought into. We have to choose the other one and consistently. You can't just one time pray to be a clear channel, start doing psychic readings and never pray again. Pray when you start, pray during, pray after. Pray when you go left, pray when you go right, you know, pray when you go forward, pray when you go backwards. Pray when you're in the dark night of the soul. Pray when everything is going well. Pray when you've lost money, pray when you've gained money. And I don't mean you literally walk around, you know, you know reciting prayers. It's it's just a, it's kind of living mantra. Humans that are learning this will recite prayers. They walk around reciting prayers of all kinds of varying religions and practices. At some point, they're going to realize it's not the beads, the counting of the beads, the reciting of the prayer. All the time, what they were trying to do was become. And I'm going to talk about that now. Because with channeling comes challenges. And remember, not just being a channel, channel, professional paid, ch we're all channels. But with channeling comes challenges. For example, some folks, you know, um, instead of consulting psychics, what they started doing, this became very, very popular, this whole, like for the last hundred years. People, instead of consulting people that were clear and prayerful, they started going, well, you don't even have to do that. I could just go buy myself a Ouija board. Or do things like automatic writing. Okay, well, wait. Even Edgar Cayce said, because somebody asked him, um, I'm, I'm hearing about automatic writing, can I do that? Because remember, they were really, 100 years ago, this was hard, you know, people didn't know as much. So they're saying to Cayce, could, could I be a good, per, you know, a, a writer? Could I have, he said, yes. But be aware of what's going to come through you. Because not only are there various parts of yourself, there are spirits hanging around. Everyone, all the there's spirits filling every room, every because dimensions are just, you know, they're all here simultaneously, but just different frequencies, so you can't see them. So Casey is saying, you can sit down, the technique, you sit down, and you just be still for a moment, and writing will start to happen. However, remember that there are beings that if you're not clear of what you want to channel, they'll just take it and do the default program. If you don't choose God, you're automatically choosing ego, is what it comes down to. And that can lend to some unhealthy or, you know, kind of odd, negative beings. Some very dark and some very not. I don't know if you know this, but in demonology, people that do exorcisms and really heavy-duty stuff, they say the most consistent um, um, causes, patterns behind demonic activity is the use of a Ouija board. And most of the time, adolescence. Are involved because when you're an adolescent you're everything's shifting not hormone not just hormonally where are the hormones taking place in your glands what do your glands connect with your chakras 
So as soon as you are hormonally shifting, your, shock, your glands are shifting, your sh then your chakras are shifting. And when those chakras are shifting, entities can enter your space, your, your beingness through those chakras. So adolescents are very much in a raw place, plus the exaggerated emotions. You know, it's like, wow, they're just way out there. So they can attract a lot, especially with the depressions and the darkness that can happen during our times, you know, in adolescence. So we can attract some really odd energy beings and all that. So in exorcism, that's what they found. Ouija boards, man, because there's not a, let's pray and connect with God first. Usually in the instructions, read it. Look for the instructions and read through it. You're not going to see a lot of connect with God, do some fasting, get prepared, you know, put on the altar of life, stuff your unhealed wounds, clear the space so you have created a sacred space to then use the board. Because the board is just a board. But what, what, if you're open to just hearing anything, then just anything will come through. It's all about, you could say it's all about, you know, intention. So, unfortunately, a lot of people that I have known and you have known, you have read, you've heard about these channels, have lost their minds by doing things like channeling beings, channeling energies. You know, there's a lot that goes on. And, I, it, you know, people just don't realize. Uh, sometimes it's because they started channeling dark entities. But sometimes what happens is there, there's a, in a word, it's integration or a lack of integration. You, you, if you're channeling something, you are supposed to become it. So if I start channeling, picture this. If I'm channeling something negative, it's going to eventually become me. And now I have a darker presence and I'm kind of messed up and I can't think clearly and I, I kind of lose it. But even if you try to channel higher being consciousness, you still have to become it. So if you're channeling lower consciousness, you are going to become it. But if you try to channel higher consciousness, it's going to call you to become it. And if you try, but you're not really authentic about it, all this higher frequency enters you and it starts to short circuit your nervous system. So even people with semi good intentions end up short circuiting and people just don't know why. You know, uh, like I said, this, this channeling came up this morning because someone told me this morning of somebody who was a, a, a healer, a channel, relatively popular, who just committed suicide because of depression, you know, and this and that. And it's just like, wow, once again, a casualty of that thing I'm talking about. This is a person who had had abuses and never truly healed them, but got caught in the channeling, healing, and different things like that. And then they lost it. So if we're all channeling, if we're all channels, and we are, and we're always channeling something, ask yourself, if you don't want to, well, I don't want to short circuit, so I'm not going to want to channel anything higher, and you want to just channel flatline, like mundane, that way there's nothing that will short circuit you, well, you're relatively safe, I think. Just kind of, you know, just channel the inner whatever you want to call it. Flatline, you know? I'm going to just channel the, you know, duh. <laughs> I have this being that's coming through me. It's not Elohim. It's not Yehovah, it's duh, you know? And, you know, it's going to be relatively easy to live up to. Is that what I'm saying? No. What I'm saying is channel the highest. But you just said it could short circuit. Not if you practice becoming it. It's only going to have an incongruity if you're, if you're trying to channel something high, but you're living low. You have to become it. Then there's no incongruence. Your nervous system and your energy systems will only short circuit when there is a, you know, a contradiction, a contrary energy. So you have to become what you're channeling. We all are becoming. And the best example of this is Jesus. Did you know Jesus was a channel? Really? What was he channeling? Something from the Pleiades? No, no, no. Far higher than the Pleiades. Oh, it must have been the Arcturian. No, far higher than the Arcturians. Was he channeled the Lemurians? No, far higher than Lemurians. Was he channeling the collective uh, beings of Venus? No. First, Jesus was channeling the Divine Mother, the Holy Spirit. First, he was channeling the Holy Spirit. And that's why 
he was able to receive guidance at that capacity. But he was more importantly, because that's, you know, like he, when he spoke, he would say, when you see me, you see the father. Father aspect of God, just like the mother aspect of God. He's saying, I have become it. I don't preach it. I don't teach. I, I am it. That's the ultimate goal of channeling, to become what you're teaching. You will do it whether you like it or not. This just in. <laughs> Somebody's channeling something else. Okay, got it. Thank you. So think about that. You're supposed to, so what, do, what are you all doing? If we channel, if we're always channeling, how are you doing? What are you channeling, by the way? I'm always angry. I'm always afraid of something going on at work. So you're channeling fear. Does that sound good? You're channeling fear. To who? To yourself and to everybody around you. Think about it. It's like saying we're always praying. Because when we say words, we're actually describing what we're expecting. Right? Whether it's God or whether it's lack. My words are my prayers. And I'm always praying because I'm always speaking. Technically, you could say your thoughts are prayers. But you're, it's the same with channeling. So what? think about your day-to-day -day life. What are you guys channeling? Are you channeling prosperity or lack? You know, and, and I know it varies. One day prosperity, one day lack. But think about how, you, how the majority of your day goes and days go. If we're always channeling, what are you channeling? And do you realize you're channeling to your children? Don't bother me right now. I'm stressed. You're channeling something to them. And it becomes your, your teaching. Because what you say and do becomes a teacher to others. We all have a bad moment. Just say, hold it. I just spouted something that was channeling. You know, leave me alone. You get on my nerves. Hold it. Highlight. Delete. Gone. Continue typing. Continue channeling. What I meant to say was, and now you correct it. Just think in terms of those mistaken moments as hold it, highlight, delete, gone. Recycle bin, empty recycle bin, gone. There's an old Islamic saying, you know, let all your loving words be written in concrete, but let all your negatives be written in sand. Why? Because a wind can come, the hand can wash over it, and it's gone. So let loving things be put in stone. But let all the hurts, fears, and whatever else, let all those things, you know, happen, you know, just in sand. Let them be mutable, that mutable. So as I'm coming to a close, think in terms of channeling, that you're always channeling, and be aware of what you want to do with this. Jesus is a good example, as I said, because first he's channeling the Holy Spirit. But then he starts channeling the Christ. Is that where he ended? No. He was channeling the Christ, and then he became the Christ. How do we know when the moment was when he actually became the manifestation of the Christ? Does anybody know when that could have happened? I'll tell you. It's when he said, it is accomplished. It is finished. It means I, that's it. I've done it. I'm it. it there's no division now. I am as God created me. I am the Christ on earth. And that's the goal for us all. I am as God created me. Can we say it all the time? You know, when you see me, you see the Father. Hell no. <laughs> you know, you sit at the breakfast table. I am the... I am that I am. And then you're, somebody burns your toes. Damn! You know, you're just right... You know, you're just... Now you're channeling breakfast anger entity. You know? <laughs> And it happens. Highlight, delete. But we're all made. I mean, our true identity is divinity. The name of that divinity is Christ, which gets twisted to be having to do with Christianity, which it's not, which with being exclusively Jesus, which it is not. Our divine name is the Christ, because I'm the created of God. I'm not the creator of myself. I'm created of God, and I'm as the Christ. That's my real identity. So what could be higher than channeling being the Christ? Nothing. And that's why when people ask me, you know, 
Who, who are you channeling? Uh, you know, I, I don't have a name because it's just Christ as much as I can. But that gets confusing because if I've grown my hair long and have a little bit of a beard of some kind, you know, people, oh, he's, wow, he really is Jesus. No, you know, um, there's people who, who don't get what I'm doing. And I, I don't even know how to name it. I don't, I don't think I often try to, to put an attached label to it because I just, I'm just kind of, this is, this is Michael. Whether I was in high school or today, it's, it's, what would you want me to do, God? What's the greatest good? You know, and, and in high school, I'm, I'm sure that somebody who knew me in high school must say, there must be a bad day I had somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure of it, but generally that wasn't me. And I know some of them, you know, know where I am now and have watched, and I don't hear any crap from them because they say, yeah, you, you were a bit different. They're, they're not saying you were like, you were like, you know, the Christ, you know, or whatever. Um, but I was, they know I wasn't a jerk. I didn't vandalize, I didn't steal, I didn't, you know, fight and do all these kinds of things. Um, I gave advice when people would ask because they would find, find me, you know. I had one time a, a, a senior come to me, I was in 10th grade. Big senior dude comes over, you know, and he says, hey man, um, he's with this girl and he says, hey, listen, listen, I've seen you around, you know, Michael, uh, you seem like a nice guy. She wants some advice, I'm like, Oracle now in, you know. <laughs> Five cents a minute, no. But um, the oracle is in, and, um, and he said, now listen, a, a friend of mine, this is some guy everybody would know, you know, he's a big dude, you know, big dude in town. And um, that guy, this is his girlfriend. And she caught him, you know, with someone else. In some, with someone else, okay? And, uh, you know, being unfaithful, as it were. And, um, and he says, she's, she's, he's wanting her back, but she's doubting. Can you, can you help her? And I'm 10th grader. I'm sitting at the little lunch table. I look up and, you know, and I look at her. and Beautiful girl, beautiful, stunning girl. And she's got tears in her eyes. And what do I do? I said, he'll cheat again. <laughs> My friend's like, no, that's not the answer. I wanted you, you know, this other guy said, that's not the answer. No, he was like upset. I'm so, I said, I'm sorry, you asked. I said, I, I know the energy, I know the person, and I know what's going on, and it'll happen again. She cried a little and said, thank you for being honest. You know, how, how can I be something else? No, not perfect by any stretch, I know. But I know that when friends drank a little, I would end up designated driver, you know, and, and, and designated because nobody was sober enough to designate me. I can't say I was technically <laughs> the designated driver, but I just ended up driving people around. And after dropping the last person off, realizing I don't have a car, this is their mom's car, <laughs> dropping them, now I have to walk home. <laughs> got home, got in trouble, put on restriction, you know. My dad, you know, you're late, blah, 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 you know. And I would love to have had the courage to say, would you not know that I would be about my father's business? <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> I probably would have, oh, yeah. um, that wouldn't have gone over well. Um, you know what's beautiful about that, though, is years later, although they were being totally facetious, whenever I would arrive at any kind of family event, because that wasn't going to be typical of me to show up anymore, whenever I did show up, they would say, oh, look, the anointed one's here. <laughs> so, um, you know, and as facetious as it was, and it was, it was being sarcastic and rude, but when they were ill, they would say, could you do some of that weird stuff you do? <laughs> and they would end up pain-free. So people don't always ask you gently and lovingly because it's beyond their ego. Their ego can't let them do that. So sometimes they'll just leak it in as a, a mild form of a compliment. Sometimes even maybe all they can say is hello when they didn't before. Don't be attached to their behaviors. Just realize if you're doing the will of God and you're doing your best to channel the presence of, and the light of God, you know, Hang in there with it, guys. You know, it's, it's not always easy. But when we're moving past that stuff, we're moving through our challenges, our tests. So I'm not just telling you facts about channeling, and I'm not just telling you the factual challenges of it. I'm saying to you that when you set the goal to channel, ultimately, without realizing it, you are setting the stage for to become, for becoming. And... Anything that, is in, that is incongruent with that becoming is going to rise as a test. It's going to look like something's you know, beating you up, so to speak. But what's happening is your soul is setting up saying, 
Do you believe, really believe you could be this? Can you channel this? You want to start channeling ascended masters? You better start living it because the frequency will hurt you. Not intentionally, but the frequency will hurt because you're not becoming. So there's an incongruence. So your nervous system can't quite line up with the energy surging through. And that lack of alignment, that lack of alignment is going to become a short circuit between the center you're calling in and your nervous system, which is sitting over here somewhere, off-center. Your energy systems that are sitting over here off-center, off-center meaning vibrationally incompatible. There's going to be short circuit. And I'm not telling you this as a, if ever you decide to become a channel, this is what to watch for. I'm saying you are a channel, so start paying attention. Because the things that are happening are not an accident. We have to become that thing we pray to, we have to become that thing we pray for. You can't just pray for prosperity. You have to become the consciousness. Or there's an incongruence, and then you'll be frustrated saying, I'm praying for prosperity, and I still have problems with prosperity. The more we become it, seek first the kingdom, means seek first to become the consciousness of God, and everything else will line up. So when people say, what are you, what are you channeling? What are you? you know, they said to Edgar Cayce, too, in his channeling, he said, you know, some of the people were saying, could you, could you channel Christ? And he said, you don't realize what you're asking. If I start channeling Christ, Jesus said, uh, Casey said, if I start channeling Christ for you people, you're going to need to raise to that vibration or it's going to kick your butt. So do you really want me to do that? See, he challenged them. And that challenge in this case is called Archangel Michael. When you try to channel Christ, before you meet up with Jesus or Christ, you're going to have Archangel Michael because Archangel Michael is the guardian of the way. He's the one that, you know, Archangel Michael's not an individual that like floats around here and there. And if he's talking to me now, he can't be talking to someone else. Archangel Michael is a consciousness and it's actually, there's a, there's a particle of your mind and even a particle of, of your brain. There's a neuron in your brain that is Archangel Michael in all of us and Gabriel, and Adolf Hitler, and every other being that's ever existed is a neuron in our brain and on our mind. So when you say you want to channel something evil, you can manifest some amazing things, but only for a while because that evil neuron starts to destroy other brain cells and become hurtful, and it kills itself eventually. So we realize it's not the darkness I'm looking for, it's the light. But the light says, then you have to live it. So Archangel Michael says to, to the people that were asking to channel, you know, Casey to channel Christ, I am the guardian of the way. You don't, you don't get to Christ, but through me. Christ is the way to God, but I'm the way to Christ. So if you want to start channeling Christ consciousness, I, Archangel Michael, kick butt. I'm going to fly into your being with a sword and start cutting things that do not belong to you anymore. I'm going to cut away things you don't need. Let's start with that relationship of yours that is like, ugh, gone. <laughs> It's, you're saying you want to be Christy and you got weirdo uh, on the, in the wings. That's not very Christy, so you won't mind, right? Cut. What else we got? Because you want to be Christy. I want to be Christ, pure light. Really? Well, you've got some relatives that aren't really pure light. Cut. It's not, it doesn't fool around. It's like here, man. And so this thing that was Archangel Michael coming through Casey... I've told some of you the story before, but I mean, the building was rattling. Plates were falling out of the cabinets. That's how intense the energy was. I am Archangel Michael. Don't mess around. It wasn't like, hello, beloveds. No, that's another being. That's another Archangel. That's not Archangel Michael. It's like, boom. So watch what you ask for. Be careful what you pray for, because you might get it. The old saying. And that doesn't mean, okay, I'll be careful and not ask for anything. It means what you ask for, you have to become. Otherwise, you'll just be getting it, whatever you're asking for, and it becomes a thing separate from you, and anything separate eventually has to be taken. I only want that which is me. You see the difference? So when people ask, you know, it's, there's times when you'll feel a little of that Archangel Michael coming through, and you, you know, now that I've described it a little bit, you know when that's coming through, because all of a sudden there's this boom. But I don't call it that. I don't say, oh, thank you, Mark, Michael. Let me channel Gabriel now. I never identify with any of those beings. If any are to come through or be part of what I'm sharing, I never do that. It's also a way to tempt people to come and see the sideshow. Go see that guy that channeled. I, I just say, no, I don't, I don't do any of that. 
so that we don't have the wrong reasons for people to come here. One of the dumbest things any person's ever said to me, no offense if you happen to be the dumb person that's done this, <laughs> but one of the dumbest things people have ever said to me, they'll go, God, you know, wow, you're, you're good. Up on the stage, we really like you. You're so charismatic. So <laughs> stupid. Charismatic? That's, all you, that's like saying, I really admired Gandhi for his diet. Terry kind of knowledge, you know. That's, is that all you got from Gandhi? Charisma? I mean, that, I don't even believe in that. I think it's lame. What you're seeing is should, should not be labeled as charisma. That's so lame. There's something you're feeling and you don't know what to call it, so you label it something with your head. Feel it, because all I ever am trying to do is be the presence of God as best I can. Not channeling God. Hold on, everybody, here it comes. It's to be that. And I try to be that in partnership. I try to be it in friendship. I try to be it as a facilitator, you know, spiritual leader here, you know, in whatever I do. I try to do it as a parent to my, you know, children and whenever I hear from them and call them or whatever. It's as best I can. So leave with that. Leave with this wasn't a talk about discarnate entities and so on. There's a progression in oracles, prophets, channeling, and it leads to one place and one place only, which was always the truth. You're supposed to become what you're channeling. And if you don't like what you're channeling, don't become it. Choose a different channel. Change channels. Go to something better. Go to something higher. And it really is a humility. It's not like, okay, now I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really go and channel God today. I don't think about anything like that. It starts with just an intention. I swear to God. I don't do any special mantras in the back room to get aligned with certain frequencies. And you might, and I think that's great if that's what you do. But I'm saying, starting with here I am. And then it starts to kind of happen. It really does. Beings like Casey, how do you do what you do? He said, it's actually kind of easy. But it's people just don't know how. But the knowing how isn't the technique. It's just the humility. It really is. I, I don't have an education, and my memory stinks, really. So I don't, I don't have an ability to have photographic memory and memorize when I come, I'm going to come out and talk. It just happens. So don't worry that your brain, your fo you know, memory isn't perfect. You don't need it. Don't worry you didn't read enough books and memorize enough information in an academic system. You don't need it. God is. God is. Wholeness, perfection, love, all. And... and just the best I can be in this moment. And if you die tomorrow, just ask, did you do your best to be the presence of God? And that's all you need to say. Yeah, is you, you can say yes to that. You're good, man. Good stuff. If you say, well, I, well what do you mean God? I was channeling an entity called Xerox. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, and, and we just kind of were talking about telling people what they need to do to have shinier fingernails. It, really? Is that the best you could do? So rise to the highest level. Every one of us in this room and around the planet can do exactly what I'm describing here because we are all the Christ. Looking like separate people, we are all the Christ. So becoming it, living it, is actually relatively easy. Not by technique. It's not three Hail Marys in the morning and, you know, and such and such. It's not. It's just, okay, I'm going to try this out. Here I am. That the Divine Mother, Jesus said, I'm leaving now. But I'm leaving you with the, whole, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Divine Mother, your comforter, your mommy, your spiritual mother, the Divine Universal Mother is here. Ask, call on her, and she will fill you. And you will channel a poem even if you're not a poet. And you'll channel a song even if you're not a songwriter. And you'll channel the right answer to the right person at any given time. And you'll go, wow, not only was it accurate, good, valuable answer, sometimes profound wording that you go, where did that come from? And you're, you're a channel. Don't be a channel of your poems. Don't be a channel of your songs or your parenting skills. Definitely don't be a channel of your parents. But what can you be a channel of? I won't tell you because you might say, well, I prefer a channel of Arcturian. That's great. Really high frequency, the Arcturians. Syrians, really cool. Love that energy. When people authentically bring that through, I think it's great. But consider going all the way to God, and let God determine what voice guidance comes through you. I never distinguish it. I never say, that, that, that last sentence was Michael. This next coming one, I feel like it's going to be Mary. No, it just switched to Gabriel. I don't do that. It's intellectualism. Go to God and let 
this beautiful choir of ascended masters and great beings talk through you without you even knowing who they are. Just be that presence. All of a sudden, there's that. and there. I don't, I don't see the difference. People will sit in the audience and go, God, it's weird, Michael. I never saw anything like this. But I saw an archangel stand. Great. I never introduced myself. I, it's it's it sidetracks. I never introduce. I never get business cards from the Divine Mother when she passes through. I just like a realtor, you know. Be sure to leave your card on the counter. Oh, that was Mary. Um, it's just this as best I can, you know, as purely as I can, as a as a nice person too, you know. I just do the best I can, as often as I can, and that's enough to make us perfect channels of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is love, peace, joy, kindness, abundance, and so on. So when we're that then we're living it. And then you can say, like Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. Meaning, when, when you see me, my will is completely surrendered to the will of God, and therefore I become the best I can, a channel of that. And I'm very grateful that, that I feel like I've accomplished a lot of that, but I'm also grateful that people can see that. You know, it's really a blessing, because for some people, it would be one of their life lessons if people don't see it enough and you get frustrated. And that's happened in my life here and there, but I'm very grateful for you folks. Because in your trust in me to be as best I can, you know that I'm not going to be incongruent as a typical pattern. You know, so same with you. Think about yourselves. Can you really live a little more and a little more in that direction and people that knew you from the past will not recognize you? Because all of a sudden there's something that shifts in you and it becomes something really beautiful. Let's take a moment for a brief meditation. Set all the stuff of the world aside, all worries, all thoughts, all concerns, all the tensions in the muscles, the bones, tendons, the organs, the glands. Let's just, let's just drop it all. Let's take just a minute to review our lives and look at what it is we have channeled. First, look at things you have channeled that were not the God or Christ self. Fear to your kids at times, worry, control of your children. That was not God. Learn to distinguish between the two. Partnerships where you slipped a bit. Times when you spoke hurtfully to, to people. Times when you let fear of financial issues get the best of you. That isn't God. You were channeling lack. The voice of lack. In some cultures they would call it you were channeling the demon of lack. God, I, that doesn't feel good. I certainly don't want to be possessed by a demon of sickness or lack or judgment. So whether it's actual entities by those names or just beliefs in me, it just doesn't seem like what I'm looking for. So become aware of those things that you're going to exercise out of your being. Belief systems, statements you've made, thoughts, actions. In this moment, I am honestly coming to the altar of my heart and soul. And I look to the heavens and I see you, Divine Mother, Holy Shekinah. I see you, Holy Spirit, as light. Shining down upon me, I am willing to let your light shine upon and expose all of my demons, all of my misthoughts and miscreations. I, it, before me, I put them on the altar. The times when I channeled ridiculousness, fear, competition, hatred, animosity, that's ridiculous. Onto the altar it goes. <sighs> Letting those demons purge forth 
onto the altar. And if you have any doubt at all that the power is not there, just call upon Christ. You can even imagine him saying, illusions, ego, devil, come forth out of that person. And I give to you my doubts about myself. I give to you my fears, competitions, all the garbage of the ego, out onto the altar to be dispersed. All that is unlike my Christ self. And even things I'm not aware of, hidden inside, I put on the altar because the Holy Spirit sees them. Sees even the things I cannot see. Out it goes and now I am empty. I have empty spaces inside of me that were once filled with these beings, entities. In my auric field, in my belief systems, in the astral body. Cleansed. I have ascended masters coming with their certain rays of light to cut away such things. Archangel Michael with his sword of truth to cut away such things. Absolutely, Holy Spirit, do your will. Do your surgeries on me and unplug from my mind, my brain, and my memory all ego-based belief systems. Even my fears of this happening. I give all of this to you. And out it goes. Glory, glory to you, God. Glory to your Holy Spirit, your, the Divine Mother, that she can see our needs like the greatest of mommies. She can see our needs and take care of us. Not only helping us clear out, now we ask the Holy Spirit to replace it. Activate in us, Mother, give birth to the Christ. Not Jesus 2,000 years ago. Give birth to the Christ in me, in us, now. And in everyone participating in this, even if they watch this tape a week from now, there is no time in spirit. Fill up. Let the Holy Spirit change you. Filling your heart, mind, body, soul, every chakra. High, low, left to right, front to back. Every particle radiating with the perfect Holy Spirit. With the Christ self. She births the Christ today. In and through me as me. And ultimately what it means is, I am the love of God. It doesn't mean we have to be male. It doesn't mean we wear a white robe. It means I am the love of God. And I will do my best to stay in alignment with that love. I will bounce back when I fall. I will shift back into center when I stray. And I will forgive myself for doing such. But then I will move forward again in that path again, in my own way, at my own workplace, amongst my own colleagues. It's not just preaching at, uh, from a, an altar or a stage. It's being that presence. And we accept that this is true, that this is real, that this is woven throughout our being, where you see me, you see the Father in this moment. I might forget, but I choose to remember Breathing that in. And heartfelt, sincere gratitude makes it lock in, never to be divided again. We can slip, but the roots of this can never be sh shifted or changed. The roots of this birth are already there, and now we just have to water and feed the seeds. And so it is. Mmm, nice.